I'm Justine. And I'm Daryl. And we're the Breakaway Bravehearts. In this video, we're exploring Venice in the off season. We'll show you Venice in mid January, the coldest month of the year. And answer the question is it worth the visit? any time of year. So we started off actually not going into Venice itself, did we? Because we were on a budget and so we actually decided not to stay in Venice Islands but out in Maghera, which was a good choice for us. It was nice, uh, really nice Airbnb, totally within our budget and very easy to get in and out of Venice. Buying the bus tickets was pretty interesting. You go to a machine, Pop in your money, you listen to something that's said in Italian, and once I paid my money, the results were surprising. Yeah, we got a bit of a shock the first time because we put the money in, it all went through, tra transaction went through, and then out popped a little pop filter box. But it turned out that inside the pop filters were our tickets. If you're feeling uncertain about using the vending machines or catching or buying your ticket elsewhere, you can actually use a city transport app, which we'll put the link for in the description. And that'll give you tickets to the train, uh, the buses, wherever you want to go in Venice. So the bus took us straight to the look what looked like to be the start of all the water taxis, water boats, everywhere where you could get around in Venice. Kind of like a terminal, right? Yeah. And so that was also a really simple process of just rocking up and buying some tickets on the water bus. And we decided to take the water bus again for budget reasons. The gondola, they were gonna charge us 90 euros to take a gondola. This is true, yeah. Even though the going price is 80 euros, so don't fall for it, guys. Justin's saying it's called a water bus, but actually when we go to the stations, we stop at stations. Um, and anyway, they just took us on these docking stations, as it were, and you could get on or off, but you had your specific destination paid for. Kia ora Aotearoa, New Zealand! Woohoo! <laughs> New Zealand flag in Venice, love it! The water bus will take you down the main routes and will stop you off. We had about eight or nine stops, I think, on the way to San Marco. So there's plenty of places where you can get on and off and you'll go under some of the 435 bridges that are in Venice. They link up the islands. It's 121 islands. Is it a little cold, Daryl? It's just a little, yeah. <laughs> I think it's four degrees today. Yeah. It was really cold, not gonna lie to you. It was very, very cold. However, that said, you know, if you're prepared and you put the right stuff on, you might feel a little warmer, but it was, I think, four degrees on the day, and this was in January. And the sky was a little dull, but it was still magnificent. I can imagine in the summertime, the sun would glint off the buildings and it would just be spectacular. It would also be completely crowded. So we were really happy that even though the sky was a little dull, the weather was a little cold, we still got to see everything and didn't have to worry about the crowds. And honestly, on the first impact, just, just going down on the water bus, um, even without the sun glint and the blue skies, you're just blown away. It's, uh, it's like nothing I've seen before. And I was just in awe, just uh, in awe. You can really tell how much of a financial power that Venice was. Uh, during the Middle Ages, during the Renaissance, this was a staging area for the Crusades. Uh, there was a lot of commerce that happened here, silk, grain and spice and art. So from around about the 13th century to the end of the 17th century, this place was booming. And you can see that in the architecture. What intrigued us was just the way that the buildings are right up on the edge of the water. And so the logistics of getting around and doing all like normal daily stuff is quite crazy really when you think about it yeah it left me thinking about how does amazon deliver or the dhl we did see a guy actually um there's the amazon, amazon delivery, delivery. <laughs> <laughs> the absolute logistics of it i mean i think we saw a technical support vehicle which was a boat um rocked up again um up against the the building they've really had to change the whole way of being it's quite quite something yeah, everything is revolved around water. There are no cars, and you've got gondola poles instead of parking spaces, and the doorways just literally open straight up onto your, your boat. 
And I guess, Justin, we've got to add that, you know, this is out of season. So there was a lot less gondolas out there. There was, um, you know, they were kind of left to the sides or pulled out altogether. So a lot of our gondola, gondola poles were empty. So they look like empty parking spaces. But in fact, you can imagine that they're just going to be so full during the summertime. So mm-hmm. we were... You know, it was so nice to be able to get a feel of it um, and also still get to the water's edge and see um, the, the buildings and everything. I've seen pictures of it in the summer and there's often gondola traffic jams on the little small waterways down the narrow bits and pieces where we didn't get to experience any of that and I'm quite glad. We have heard things like it can be very, very packed of tourism, obviously, and it can be quite smelly. I mean, even... As you go off the main river, you even during out of season, you can often get a strained whiff of something. So I can't imagine what it's like um, in the summer. What you see here right now is uh, the way they transport things. That was construction, I believe. Of course, talking about construction, Venice is going through a lot of construction at the moment. And of course, they have the uh, difficulties of fighting the water levels. Yes, Venice is flooding more often these days and there is a plan in place to build um, some kind of construction that's going to help the tourists during those flooding periods. Uh, But that was put aside because of, first of all, because of corruption in, in the government and then because of COVID, but now they've advanced that again. So some stage in the near future, there should be some plan to help Venice with its flooding. Of course, Venice is a very rich place and has been a rich place for a long time. But it also is facing its challenges and it needs to generate some income. So please be aware that from April of this year, that's 2024, they will be introducing a daily visitors uh, payment scheme um, where they will be asking people who do not stay overnight in Venice um, for a fee. I believe the fee might be about 19 euros, but I can't be sure, so don't quote me on that. It really is spectacular. There's nothing like it. So St. Mark's Basilica has been the main church in Venice for almost a thousand years. Established during the 9th century, but adopted its current size and form in 1177 and was paved 100 years later. It's actually based in the lowest point in Venice, and so it's always the first place to be flooded. And it gets flooded several times a year. And so when this happens, they place little wooden footbridges for the locals and the tourists to get around. Fortunately, we didn't have to encounter that. And it's just magnificent. And most of the attractions in Venice and all over Italy, you've got two different prices. You can just pay your regular price and take your luck on the day as to whether or not there's a queue, or you can pay to skip the queue in advance. Uh, Being off-season in Venice, we didn't need the skip the queue versions uh, because none of the lines were very long anyway. Which for those that are on a budget, there's just another simple tip to be able to avoid an extra cost. But make sure you subscribe because coming up soon we've got a video of Florence also in the off season in January, which is quite a different story. Yeah, the entrance to the Basilica was actually quite cheap. I think it was three euros each. Once you get in, you do have to pay extra if you want to climb uh, up to the balcony. Which takes you also into the museum, right? Yes, extra for the museum. And then there was another very special part right at the back that looked up at the dome and that was an extra cost too. So originally this church wasn't dedicated to St. Mark. It was dedicated to uh, St. Theodore, who was at the time the patron saint of Venice. And it was a small church just built out of wood, probably around about 819. But then in the early 11th century, they actually went and stole the remains of St. Mark, his relics, from Alexandria in Egypt. And they, they hid the relics of St. Mark under some pork in a wagon. And went, as they came through, the Muslim guards who inspected them didn't want to check the pork. And that's how they got away with kidnapping St. Mark. They sailed back to Venice and a huge storm Uh, took hold of the boat, but according to legend, the boat was about to sink when a vision 
of St. Mark appeared and told the captain to lower the sails, and that's how they avoided capsizing and made it safely to Venice. The cathedral has 283 pieces made from gold and silver and other precious metals. And most of these were uh, treasure that was taken from Constantinople. And when you go inside the church, you'll see there are four horses made of bronze. And once again, they were stolen from Constantinople and brought back to Venice as spoils of the war. Some areas of the cathedral still operate on a day-to-day -day basis and people still go there uh, for religious ceremonies or just to... To uh, worship. So after San Marco, we decided to walk back. It had gotten a little bit wet. You can see people have got their umbrellas out now and it was definitely getting colder. But we really wanted to go through those narrow winding streets to have a good look. There are a lot of shops for shoppers with a, a larger budget than what we currently have. Yep, that's correct. That is a crystal dress for the price of 3,159 euros. But as it was cold, I didn't feel like that was a dress I needed today. We were also on the lookout for a good restaurant for lunch. Some of the restaurant prices weren't the cheapest, especially when you're in the main areas or along the riverbank. So we were looking for a restaurant in the back streets that maybe had one of the menus of the day that we could try out. So your menu of the day would normally give you either a meat option or a fish option. I don't recall seeing any vegan options, to be honest. And there's likely to be some kind of pasta in there um, and a dessert and a starter. Along with your more pricey boutiques, there's also a lot of little uh, tourist trap shops that have got your, uh, your usual tourist items. And of course, masks. Heaps of shops with those beautiful Venetian masks that are used during carnival time. You do want to take your time shopping. Don't necessarily buy it in the first shop you go to because just a few meters down the road, you'll find exactly the same thing in another shop. So shop around and you're likely to find yourself a bargain. It's not only just the bargain, but it's also the variety of things that were there, right, Justine? I mean, mm. you know, when you mention about those masquerade masks, I mean, you go to those people, you can see actual people hand making them. And that really intriguing it really adds a thing to the options that you have open to tourists. I loved looking down these little narrow waterways and seeing all the little bridges and the houses that are just right on the water and there's a few places we even saw somebody fishing because you are allowed to fish in the canals. So I guess what we should mention is that even though we didn't use like a map as such and we just wandered around there are some areas that will highlight which direction you're going in, kind of like a street sign that you can look out for that kind of sends you in the right direction. Yeah, I don't feel we needed a map at all. Just wandering around. We did wind back on ourselves many times, but I really enjoyed it. I liked getting lost. It was fabulous. There's always something somewhere around some corner. When I walk around places like this with so much history, I love to imagine what would have been happening in the past, the types of people that were here, what they were doing, what they were wearing. And it also made me imagine the time of the Black Death in 1348. When that struck Venice, Venice was just devastated. Within three years, the plague killed 50,000 people. And then in 1630, they had the Italian plague, which killed a third of Venice's citizens. So I'm very glad of our modern times that we can cope with such things so much better and COVID didn't do so much damage. So it was just as we were discovering this delightful little wine bar when my camera started to fog over. I wasn't really sure what was going on. When I checked it later, I discovered that the weather, it was so cold that my camera had actually fogged over inside my phone. Uh, so from here on out, we had to just shut off the video and we're going to play you a whole montage of photos that we took the day before when it was sunny because we continued to walk around even though we were freezing. Uh, we continued to walk around because it is such an amazing place. So what do you think, Daryl? Venice, mid-January, in the off-season, is it worth the visit? Is it worth the hype? Oh, there's absolutely no question of a doubt. Yeah, I'd have to agree. I'd go back in a heartbeat no matter what time of year. Venice is now top of my favourite cities in the world. Next time, let's take more than a couple of days. I would say a week in Venice. Needs to be. Just one Cornetto.
Give it to me.